I'm Dustin Gibson with OPT. We are going to be doing a really, really quick processing in PixInsight just to get you from raw data with not much there to a shareable image, something like what I have on the screen here, as quickly as possible. Again, this is not going to be teaching you all the tools in PixInsight. This is teaching you just enough of the language to survive in this new strange city. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to open PixInsight. I am going to assume that you already have um, brought in your raw data to at least a point where you have master files. So you've done the pre-process image set where you add your darks if you've taken them or your biases or your flats if you've done any of that and then combined all the images, had them registered. It's an automated process in PixInsight. Very simple, lots of tutorials out there if you haven't. But we're going to start at the place where we already have our raw data combined. So let's bring them into the program. These three files here, we've got sulfur, oxygen, and hydrogen. You can see none of them yet look like very much, even the hydrogen data. It's pretty boring. You could share this if you wanted to, but uh, it's probably not going to turn a lot of heads. So what we're going to do is go to Process Explorer, and let's see what's behind all of this data. Screen transfer function is the tool we're going to use. We double click that, and if you click on an image and hit this little radioactive symbol, it's going to take its best guess at what part of the data you're actually interested in. And so here's the hydrogen data. You can see pretty clean. Let's go to oxygen. And again, pretty clean. And then sulfur, not much sulfur here. So a little bit rougher, but still usable. We can make this work. So we're going to get all of these ready to go and then combine them to get a color image. So the first step. Right now, this is not an actual stretch. These are just guesses at what you want to stretch. So let's make the, the stretch actually applied. We're going to go to histogram transformation and let's click each image and apply the stretch that it's guessing at for us. So as we drop in this box here, you drag the arrow up, drop it in, and then this little arrow, apply it to the image that the stretch came from. There we go. So we reset here, reset here. Now this one is actually stretched. Let's do the same thing for these two. Click on the image, take the arrow from screen transfer function to the bottom bar here, and drag it over, and reset each so that it's ready for the next one. There we go, that one is stretched. And the last image here. So we're gonna drag this up, apply it, and drop it in. Perfect, so we'll reset these, and then we can close this part we are done with stretching the image. So now what we want to do is get them to where they look the way we want them to, the best they can independently before we combine them just to save us a lot of steps later. So what we're going to do is come here and go to Curves Transformation. If you've used Photoshop a lot, this is probably a tool you're very familiar with. But let's click on an image. And then this little circle here gives us a live preview of the changes we make. So we're going to click on that and you can see this preview tool so that as we make a change, let's grab the highlights for instance up here, you can see that change happen in real time and that's what we want. So we really want to try to give this some life. So let's really push that and bring out all the data. Look at how three, three dimensional that makes it look. And then you can see as you push the highlights, some of the shadows went a little too far so it turns kind of gray. What we want to do is bring those back down and give it some contrast back. So Let's just say here, for instance, we're going to close the preview and then apply that to the image. So there's our new image. We can see how far we've gone so far. And if you want to see where it started and where it is now, this little back arrow here will help you do that. Just click that. That's where we started. There's the new image. Looks quite a bit better. So let's reset and let's do that to the other two. This is the most manual part of the process, but one that saves you a ton of time later if you're not worried about saving all the data for large prints or anything like that. You're just trying to get to a final image. And we'll bring this one down, bring this back up, give it a little more, there we go. And let's apply that. Perfect. And let's do this one as well. So live preview, same thing. We'll push it. As you notice, it bloats the stars a little bit. We'll do another video on star masking, on how to protect those if you really want to get those exactly right. And apply it, 
there we go. So we've got three stretched images now, each with a curve to kind of season to taste before we combine them. So now we're at a place where we can combine the image, and this is really kind of where the magic happens, where you get to see it in color. We're gonna to go to process here at the top, and then channel management and channel combination. So you see it gives us a red, green, and a blue channel. Most people combine narrowband data, data in SHO, which is the Hubble palette. That's where you get a lot of those greens and the blues that you see in these images. So let's do that. We're gonna apply SHO, so red will be S, green will be H, and blue will be oxygen, O. There we go, so we hit OK. And now this little circle here is going to apply those changes globally to all three of them. And there we go, we're getting closer, so now we have a color image. We can close channel combination, and you can see we're getting a lot closer to the image we started with, but now we still, it's not super contrasty, it doesn't really have that pop, so we wanna tweak it a little more. So let's go back to curves where we just left. Let's open curves back up, but now instead of doing the independent channels, we're going to look at this color image. So we can still brighten it up if we want to, if it's not quite bright enough, or dim it down, whatever we want. But let's just say we're going to brighten it a little and then bring the shadows down and make it a little more contrasty. There we go. You can also do the same thing with each color independently. So for instance, the green, if you think it's just too green heavy, click on green and then you can find either the highlights up here or the shadows down here. Just click on one and as you move it around, you can see you can either make the image more green or you can tame those greens a little bit by pulling it down. So we'll come down and there we go. It really highlights the blues and the red a little bit. And you can do the same for red and blue if you'd like for those two to pop a little more. Or you can see over here, you can affect just luminance data, the hue of the image, or the saturation. So maybe you like the colors, but you want more of them. Click the saturation tab, and then you can grab this slider again, and just bring it up, and you can see the saturation changing. Or bring it back down if you want it to be more monochromatic, or deaden it a little bit. You can see that happening. So this is where we started. We'll just say, all right, there's a color image right there, close enough for these purposes. Let's close our preview and then just drag this over to the image. It runs, does its thing, and then you can see now we have a color image really starting to come together. And if we want to see where it was and where it is, it's just got a little bit more life. So we'll close curves and now it looks good, but it's not quite sharp enough. So the last tool that I use here for uh, quick edits is here in Convolution, and it's called Unsharp Mask. So you click that. You don't change these unless you, once you run it, if you find that it's just pushed it way too far, made it super noisy, or there's a problem in the image, you can, uh, you can adjust those. But otherwise, I always just start with the default setting, apply it, and see what it does. So here we go. You can see it's a subtle change, but it's one that I think it makes a big impact on the image before, um, before sharing it, is when you look at where it started and then where it is now, you can see it's just a little sharper, but one that really, when you compare them side by side, is a pretty big difference looking at the stars. So here we've got a final image, and this one is ready to go. So this is where I would stop kick it over, make any final adjustments in just a little Instagram app or in one of the other apps, Facebook, whatever. But um, this is pretty close and to be able to do that in five minutes, it's, it's a good way to go. So good start and uh, from here we'll get more and more complex, more detailed, show you how to really tweak an image down to the finest levels. But this is a good starting place. Thanks for checking it out, guys.